All right, welcome back to the Jake Joshing channel, and today's subject is going to be an amplitude of the sun. Okay, so an amplitude question is going to read as such. On August 10th, your vessel's 0426 zone time, DR position is latitude 52 degrees, 7 minutes north, longitude 142 degrees, 16 minutes east, when an amplitude of the sun is observed, the sun's lower limb is about 20 minutes of arc above the visible horizon and bears 074.5 degrees per standard compass, PSC. Variation in the area is 12 degrees west. The chronometer reads 07 hours, 24 minutes, 19 seconds, and is 2 minutes and 34 seconds fast. Which of the following is the deviation of the standard magnetic compass? All right, so an amplitude question, the first thing you wanna do, just like any other question, you wanna organize all the knowns. So in the question we have, our date was August 10th, and our time, our zone time, was 0,426. They gave us our position, latitude 52 degrees, seven minutes north, longitude 142 degrees, 16 minutes east. Then they told us the sun amplitude was observed at 074.5 degrees. Then you wanna make notes on what kind of amplitude it is. It said lower limb, so the lower limb of the sun was being observed, so you wanna make note of that because we're gonna be going into the nautical almanac, and it was above visible horizon of 20 minutes. Another note we want to take is variation was 12 degrees west, and they gave us our chronometer, and they gave us the time that it was fast by. So you take those notes, and I would say the first thing you'd want to start with is solving the time on the chronometer. We know that a chronometer, it's slow, you're going to add that time difference. If that time difference is fast, you're gonna subtract that time difference. So our chronometer read 072419, and we were told it was fast two minutes and 34 seconds. So you take your chronometer time, and you subtract it by the rate at which it's fast by, and 07 hours, 24 minutes, 19 seconds, subtracted by two minutes, and 34 seconds gets you 07 hours, 21 minutes, and 45 seconds. Take that, make a note, so we can start using this time to compare it to our zone time. Okay, so now that we got our real chronometer time, we make a note of it, and now we gotta figure out what our zone time is in reference to Greenwich. So in order for us to find out our zone time in reference to Greenwich time, we need to find our zone description. And I've mentioned this before, we've gone through these steps before in previous videos, but let's go through it again. So remember, there's 24 hours in a day. If you times 24 by 15, you get 360 degrees. That's why in order to find your zone description, you take your longitude of wherever you are and you divide by 15, and that gets you your zone description. So for us to find our zone description, to add or to subtract it from our zone time of 0426, we need to take our longitude, which is 142 degrees, 16 minutes, divided by 15 degrees, equals our zone description. But we have to convert our minutes into degrees because you can't just divide 142 degrees and 16 minutes by 15 degrees. You have to take your minutes and divide it by 60, because 60 minutes equals one degree. 60 minutes also equals one hour. A good way to keep track of that arc to time conversion. So, 16 minutes divided by 60 is gonna get you 0.2 six 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 seven degrees just tack that on to your 142 and you have 142.2 two, 
6667 degrees east. And you divide that by 15 degrees, the number you get rounded to the nearest whole number, and you come out with a zone description of 9 hours east. It's important to remember that when you're dealing with zone description, east is a negative number and west is a positive number. So our zone description hours east, east is negative, like I said previously. Nine hours east will get you a zone description of negative nine hours. Then the next step, you're going to take that negative nine hours and you're going to apply it to your zone time, which was 0426. Okay, so now that we have our zone description, we can apply it to our zone time. Zone time is plus or minus zone description will get you your GMT time, your Greenwich Meridian time. Well, we know that our zone time was 0426 on August 10th. Our zone description was east, so it's a negative 9. We're subtracting 9. Unfortunately, 9 is bigger than 4. So what we have to do is we have to take a day, take a day back, and add 24 hours to our 0,4. 24 hours plus 0,4,26 is 2,800 hours. 26 minutes. So we reverse the day so we could add 24 hours to our 0, 04 time. So now we have a number that's larger than 9. So 28 hours, 26 minutes minus zone description 9, subtracting 9 because it's in east, east longitude, gets you GMT 19 hours, 26 minutes. We reverse the day. So when we go into the Nautical Almanac for more information, we are no longer dealing with August 10th. We are Greenwich Meridian time, 19 hours, 26 minutes on August 9th now. So you're going to take your Greenwich Meridian time, your new date, your new time, and you're going to use this information to find the declination of the sun in order to solve for our amplitude. But before we go into the nautical almanac, we need to get it accurate down to the second. So we have to go back to look at what our real chronometer time was. And our real chronometer time was 07 2145. 1900 military time is 7 o'clock in the evening. So we're dealing with an amplitude at sunset. But, I digress. We want the GMT hours. And the exact minute and seconds are going to be pulled and used from what our real chronometer time was. So we're now looking for 1926. We want to go into the Nautical Almanac for 1900 hours, 21 minutes, and 45 seconds. That is the precise minutes to seconds that we're looking for. And we know that from our chronometer, and we know the hour from the GMT. And we know the date solving from the zone time, zone description. So you're going into the nautical almanac for 1900 hours, 21 minutes, 45 seconds on August 9th. Okay, so now that we know the date is August 9th and we know that the hour is 19 hours and 21 minutes and 45 seconds, now we need to go into our nautical almanac and we just need to pull out the declination of the sun for this time and date. When you're doing amplitude, you just need the declination. You don't need the GHA. So we open our nautical almanac, and we keep scrolling through until we get to August 9th, 
and I'll put a picture up on the screen, but you get to your August 9th page, and you scroll on the top of each one, and you get to the sun column, then you go down the sun column to August 9th, and then when you're in August 9th, you scroll down to your 1900 hour. You go across and you see that the declination of the sun at that time is 15 degrees and 43.1 minutes north. And since this is an amplitude problem, we don't need to go any further. So take your marker and make a note that our hours, it is 15 degrees, 43.1 minutes north. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to find the D correction to get the actual declination at 1900 hours. Our little D correction. And that's the little D at the very bottom of the page. And again, I'll put a picture up on the screen, but you go back in to your nautical almanac, August 9th, in the sun column and go all the way to the bottom of the page and you'll see a little d and next to it is 0 0.7. Now whether we add or subtract this number we have to look at the trend on that page. So keeping an eye on the picture and you can see the numbers go from 15 degrees to 30.7 then it goes to 15 degrees, 29.9, 29.2, 28.5, 27.7, .7, 27.7, and the list keeps going down, so the numbers are decreasing. So since the trend is decreasing, that means we have to take our little d correction, correct for it in our increments and correction pages, and subtract that number from our hours. Okay, so we know that our D correction was negative 0 0.5 based on what we saw on the trend on the pages and the number at the bottom of the page of August 9th. So to correct for your D correction, you go to the back of the book, you go to increments and corrections, and then you line up this number with your minutes and seconds. So you go to the increment correction page, that has 21 minutes on it and then on the right hand side of the chart you'll see V or D corrections tabs but you go on there and you scroll down until the small number on the left side of this column you find the 07 and then you look at the number right next to that number and that's 0.3. So that is the correction for our D correction on that minute and seconds time on the 1900 hour. So you found the 07 and next to it is 0 0.3 on the right hand side and you take that and you call it a negative 0 0.3 because their D correction was negative and then you put these two numbers together. So your real declination is 15 degrees and 42.8 minutes north. All right, so we have our declination, that's great. But now we have to convert the minutes into degrees. So again, like I said before, 60 minutes equals 1 degree equals 1 hour. Our declination was 15 degrees 42.8 minutes. You do 42.8 divided by 60, that gets you 0 0.7133. You just take that and you tack that on to your declination. Then you need to do the same thing for latitude. So latitude 7 minutes divided by 60 minutes is going to get you 0.11667 degrees. And now you take that number and you tack that on to 52. 
and now your latitude converted to degrees is 52.11667 degrees. Why is that important? Because the formula for solving an amplitude is right here, and it must be in degrees. The sine of amplitude is going to equal the sine of your declination divided by the cosine of your latitude. So now that we have these in degrees, we just need to do some plug and chugging. Take these numbers, put them here, and then you can solve for what your amplitude is. So I'll take you through how this works. So you get the sine of your declination over your cosine of your latitude. You get that, you divide it, and then you have to inverse sine to get your number. After you plug this all in, you're going to get 26.2 degrees. Now even though we found the degrees with our formula, we're not done yet. We have to remember that our declination was north, and we have to remember that our longitude was east. When you solve for amplitude, it's different than azimuth. Amplitude setup is east-west on the left side, north-south on the right side. You just circle which one was your longitude, you circle which one was your declination, and that is your true degrees of your amplitude. Now you have to convert that to the real degrees. So we know our longitude was east and we know our declination was north. So we had an amplitude of east 26.2 degrees north. Now we want this in true degrees. So what you do is you look at where you are east or west and then you mark that. And then you look at if you're going north or if you're going south. Here, we're east-north, so we're going north. So we're going from 0, 9, 0 degrees, going north, going in this direction, 26.2 degrees. We're going in that direction. And that direction right there is our true degrees. Now to find that, you just do simple math. Since we're on the east side, east is also 0, 090 0 degrees on a compass, and we're going north, we're going up. So we're decreasing that number. So you go 0, 090, 0, subtract from our amplitude, 26.2, and you get 063.8 degrees. And that is our true amplitude. And you can always check by what you observed in the problem. It said we observed this amplitude at 074.5 degrees. 063.8 degrees is in the same quadrant. That's how you know you're on the right track. And now for the final step of the problem. Now that we know our true amplitude, our true course, we take that number and we put it on our can dead men vote twice acronym chart. When you add these numbers going down, it's east. And when you subtract these numbers going down, they're west. So continuing on, we know that our true course is 0, 6, 3.8 degrees. Remember, the question wants us to solve for deviation. Well, we can figure that out now, now that we have our true course. Our variation was given to us, and that's 12 degrees west. So we need a number, subtract 12, equals 0, 0,638. 
So you just do math backwards, and you get 75.8 degrees. That's your magnetic compass, 075.8 degrees. Now we need to find our deviation. Our per standard compass is what we observed on the sun. That amplitude we observed was 074.5 degrees. We need a number between these two to find our deviation. Well, we know that this number, our per standard compass, is less than our magnetic compass, so we know we're going to have to add a number. I put a positive sign, and then I put an east next to it, because I know that's what it's going to be. It's going to be an east number. So I take 75.8, and I subtract it from 74.5, and that gets me 1.3. So our deviation is 1.3 degrees east. And that's the answer to a sun amplitude problem when the sun is above the visible horizon at 20 minutes. The reason that note was important is because if the sun is above the visible horizon, it's not on the visible horizon, therefore it's on the celestial horizon, and that would be in Bowditch. But when the sun's on the celestial horizon, there's no extra steps that need to be taken. And without further ado, that's how you do an amplitude problem.